Memo Rojas and Gustavo Jacobin, who started the 0-1 in the six car, respectively, have had some comings together this year. It's green, starting green, in Detroit. Green. We get the green. Oh, oh, the field just... is jostling for position here as we head down to turn one, Dorsey. Everybody back in line, luckily, before they got to the start-finish line. And you see GT cars behind, guys. Right now, out in front, it's the 0-1. Memo Rojas with a great job qualifying on the pole. Really only the second earned pole of the 0-1. Frizzell is off. Yep. Brian Frizzell, Bert Frizzell is off. Christian Fittipaldi, a good start. He moves up to second. And we may have just had uh, oh, a change for the lead. As off the off two goes cars. around. That's our championship leader, the two. Remember, cold tires, it's going into darkness right now. We're getting close to it. The racetrack's got cold temperature. That was a strange spin there. This is the GT <laughs> battle, Ferrari versus Ferrari. Look at this, the 61 out in front. That's Alex Tagliani. If you think you recognize that from being an IndyCar fan, you are right. Indeed, Tagliani drafted in to replace Max Pappas this weekend as Pappas was doing nationwide duty at Mid-Ohio this weekend. This is the battle for second and third as John Edwards on timing and scoring being shown leading the GT class. It's already a tough day for the number 90 Spirit of Daytona team. Ricky Taylor behind the wheel. They had their worst finish of the season just last week at Road America and things not going well early here. Yeah, and it helps to have a go pedal, doesn't it? That's exactly Ooh, what you said. Oh, Rojas is that too deep. In too deep, Fittipaldi took a wide entry to that corner. Rojas was hard on the brakes, had nowhere to go as Christian turned in. You can see the nose is dislodged. Inside the 94, just, you know, a little too much. Just not reading yeah. the situation clearly, Dorsey. More problems for wow. the two. No wing. No wing, so he's made pretty stout contact, and this is championship implications, big time championship implications. Look at the damage to the left oh, rear. this is huge. And we see this very damaged championship leading car coming to pit lane here. Ryan DL gonna get behind the wheel if the team can get the car fixed. Now, believe it or not, the back doesn't look all that bad to fix. I mean, those are both on parts. The bad news is the left front splitter is gone. And that is a one-piece part that goes underneath. That takes quite a bit longer to put that together. Right there, you see it. For Mike Shank Racing, they've been having a great afternoon as Gustavo Jakobin leads the field to the line in his Ford-powered Riley and down to turn one. He timed that perfectly as the pace car peeled off. He was on it and going, and look at this battle. Oh, boy. This Here is Pat Long. He said, OK, you didn't want to give it to me. I'm going to try and take it away from you right now. Two really aggressive drivers here. Tagliani has to give it up. He has to give it up, and now he comes under pressure from the 63 of Lee Keen right behind. And Patrick Long beginning to check out after he got that move made. The reason Tagliani is in this car is because Max Pappas was racing today at Mid-Ohio in the nationwide race. A problem, a mechanical issue in the number 70. We had talked about the fact that the Mazdas had not finished 1-2 this year, and now one of the Mazdas out, and that brings out a full course caution. Back to green, an hour and 23 to go from Kansas. Out in front right now, the red, white, and blue Corvette, the number five, with Joao Barbosa behind the wheel. Tell you what, one thing this Action Express has done this year is rebound magnificently. We sort of rode America. The 44, the leader in the GT Championship on the pit lane with radiator problems, and then the 99 out on track, uh, missing something substantial. It'd be a cooler ride now, Cal. I don't think Bear Bond is going to fix that. They could uh, Bear Bond him in, I guess, and see him in California for the next round on the transporter. Right on board the three. This is Sarah's on board with. Look at that board eight goes to the inside of Alex Gurney. There is not enough room there. It's too tight. You're not going to see him at night very easily either. Just see headlights in your side view mirror. Watch this. Gurney has turned. Sarazan has nowhere to go. And that impact there is what tore the door off the Red Dragon. And you can just see from on board the three, it's contact left front to right rear on the 99. As we go back to green and head down into turn one, leading the field, Jordan Taylor in the black number 10 Velocity Worldwide Corvette. Oz Negre slots into second, and then right behind him, Scott Pruitt in the blue and white 0-1. Oh, oh, got trouble again. 42 gets turned around. There was a bunch of Argy Bargy. Cameron. And here come the GT guys, and they're still mixing it up too. Oh, look at this. Ah, oh, the fueler. Unbelievable. The fuel neck is still inside the neck yeah, of the car here. Already got stuck. Oh, and the six is off. A problem oh, for no. the six. I can't believe the action in this race right now. There is drama happening all the way around this racetrack. Well, that fuel nozzle is going to be a stop and hold for 30 seconds. That's mandatory. This, I don't know what's going on with Oswaldo there, but. This is uh, Justin. Justin. Justin Wilson, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
This is potentially a really hazardous situation. Oh, oh it's stuck. It's stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. stuck. So they saw him start to pull. He would have got the call on the radio, go, 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 and it got stuck, and he had to take another bite at it and could have get it done. Alessandro Balzan in the 63, leading in the GT category. And even with a penalty earlier on, they've fought back from that and done well. Beautiful job by Jordan Taylor, who's remaining calm. You can just see it in the body language of that race car, Dorsey. He seems to be under control right now. Now to take a deep breath right now, regather your skills all together, and get back to work. Well, Sandro Balzan, 10 seconds and change in hand, the lead in GT. That is comfortable for him. Joel Miller still leading and a comfortable lead as well in GX. Anything but comfortable in Daytona prototypes because Scott Pruitt refuses to let go of that rear wing of the Velocity Worldwide Corvette in front. Taylor with a comfortable lead, comfortable for us, not for him as he comes through the banking, looking for the line, the checkered flag flies, Jordan Taylor, Max Angelelli win in Kansas. The disappointment on the face of Memo Rojas and the elation on the part of the Velocity Worldwide crew. Alessandro Balls on. We've been waiting for it. Close He's all year. Can he do it? Just through the trioval, they have dominated. He and Lee Keen, a great partnership. Keen, balls on, take the victory in GT. This is fantastic, boys. What a couple of rounds we got left. Mazda Raceway Laguna's sake, and then we finish it off at the Bull Ring at Lime Rock Park, Dorsey. It's going to be fun. No, spectacular, and the GT just as good. I mean, the championship there is, is tightening down, and it's one of those deals where Alessandro Balzon with that victory moves to the top, but Potter and Lally, yeah, they dropped back, but they've only fallen back by one point.